So a casual glance at the channel might make you think that I'm obsessed with these things, but nothing could be further from the truth. What I am interested in is understanding things so I can replicate them, experimenting with things so I can improve them and sharing it with everybody so we all get a chance. And that means, well, it means doing lots of different things because people have access to lots of different equipment. One of the things though has got to be this is a PC fan. It's so easy for people to get hold of these and we've done stuff with this before if you remember the wind wall where we basically converted a hundred of these to generators. Now converting these to generators is actually a piece of cake. We're at the back of the fan it'll have a label on it and just pick the label off. Label off, what you'll see is a white piece of plastic in there. What that actually is, is a split clip and we need to remove that. So press it down, get a couple of pins in there and get that clip off. There you go, you can see the split right there. <laughs> There's the clip, don't lose it. When you've done that, you can just pick the whole thing off. Put the rotor to one side and let's have a look at the stator. The stator has these wires here. We need to free those wires up. Now, take a firm hold of the stator and twist and the stator will lift out. If we look at the stator, we can see that there's a capacitor there, there, and some kind of IC right there. What we need to do is remove those. Now you can see that there's only those components looking at the bottom of the board. We just get some snips, get in there, and snip those components off the board. Now, desolder the two wires. Now mechanically PC fans are pretty simple, I mean there's the fan holder, there's the rotor, you can see the magnet out there because there's a brushless motor and this with the magnet on the outside makes it an outrunner and then this is the bit that we've just been focusing on and it's four lumps of steel and some wire wound round it. There are in fact two coils on here and if we look at the bottom we'll see there are three pins. There are three pins because there's a start and an end and there's a tap where the two coils are joined. Now we need to find out which one those are. Thankfully the resistance of a wire is directly related to its length. So if we get one coil we'll get one resistance reading. If we get two coils joined together we'll get twice that reading and so we'll know where the beginning and the end is. So what we need is a resistance meter. Okay, so there's my three points and I'm going to measure them with a meter. What reading do I get Luke? About 30 ohms. Awesome. If I measure these two? 30 ohms. Okay, and then these two? Sixty-one ohms. Awesome! <laughs> so remember I said it just adds up. The two at 30 ohms are the separate coils. These two wires are the ends of the two coils and they're joined there because that's 60 ohms. So what I need to do is solder a red and a black wire on those two points and it doesn't matter which one's which. Once you've done that, we can put the whole thing back together again and you just put it back in the reverse of how you took it apart. So press the stator into place, there we go, stick the rotor in there, making sure that the wire's actually out of the way, and then this little white clip, it goes back. It is a little bit of a pain to get it in there, but not too much, eh? You just press that white clip in there with your safety pins, there we go with your safety pins to make sure that it's in place. Once it's in place, stick the label back on. Once we've done that, we'll have got ourselves a little wind generator. And I'm reading the unloaded voltage right there. So 
we can get two or three volts out of that, which is pretty simple. The coils are basically wound like this, and you'll notice they go in the same direction. There's the V1, V2, V0 that I was on about, and we soldered to V1 and V2. Now, sometimes you'll find, actually I say sometimes, but it's pretty much all the time, you'll find that each manufacturer has a different control board. But all you're really looking to do is remove the components from whatever control board you've got. You can scrape those off, cut them off. And you're looking for those three pins that we just looked at, and they're always there. Then you're looking for whichever two pins you connect to, gives you the highest resistance reading, and you'll solder to those. So the process, it's all the same. Don't be fooled by the different control board, because you're not going to use it, just scrape everything off and you're just looking for those two wires. They're wound the same way, so you will find them. Once you've found them, solder to them, and then you'll get yourself a little PC fan generator. What we want to do is look at this as its own generator. So what I'm going to do is remove this section here. We just clip this stuff off to take that central boss out. This! This! is the core generator section. It was a brushless motor. Making that adaption, we've now turned it to a generator. We've removed the blade so we can fit whatever we like on here, whether it's gears or cogs or alternative blades or whatever. We can make a little generator now out of this because we've got our generation section. And if we hook it up and give it a spin right there, and then just by spinning it by hand, you can get about 1.3 volts or so. Now, I was slower spinning it with my finger than we were breathing on it, but we're still getting about 1.3 volts from my little generator that we've got. So I actually got a couple of these, done the conversion on this one, picked it out, and now we've got two. So that's brilliant because we can now use them as a comparison. This one I've left in its PC fan state, its raw state. This one we're going to change, we're going to change it with this, because what this is, is a toroidal propeller. Now we've used this in our air conditioning units that we've made because it is super quiet. And of course there's a fan buzzing in your ear all day, super quiet is a real important issue. However, it's a good fan. Is it a good generator? It's one of those questions that people keep asking. Now, when it comes to generation, the voltage is directly related to BLV sine theta. That is, the strength of magnetic field, the length of the wire, the angle the wire makes to the magnets, and the speed at which it turns. So we've got two identical units. All of those things are fixed. The only thing we can change is the speed at which this is going to turn. So it's a question, will it turn faster with this, or will it turn faster with this? Now this has got a bigger area than this one. So what we'd expect to having a bigger area with more wind, and the wind is effectively the push, we ought to be able to push it better, and this should spin faster. So we should get a higher voltage if we stick that on there. This one is much smaller in its swept area, and so there's much less push on this. Will this give a higher voltage than this, or will it give a lower voltage? That can be seen as a direct measurement that how effective this fan shape is at grabbing the air and converting the push of that air into speed of rotation, and exactly the same thing here. In order to give it some air to push, I've got an ordinary hairdryer, and we're going to hold it roughly at the same distance, and we're going to measure the voltage while we do it, because all we're looking at is how much faster are these two spinning with the same air going over them, and that will give us a comparison of how much better this is, is this, or this, is at grabbing that air to turn it into push to make it spin. four and a half five volts somewhere round about there that's quite a lot of push now we'll try our toroidal propeller about the same distance oh only about 1.8 volts now there's Probable that I've done a lot of things wrong with this, but I don't really mind because the whole point of the video is to go about 
how we might test something, how we might create the equipment that we want to test something for whatever it is is your favourite design. For me that doesn't look so good, but maybe it works better with four blades, maybe it works better with two blades, maybe it works better if I blow the air from the back or the front. There's a whole load of questions and stupid simple tests like that doesn't answer, but it does create the opportunity for people to look at other alternatives because when it comes to generation remember beaucoup poisson dans la mer there's just a whole load of things you could be looking at and if you've got the ability to look at them give them a go because this is just really simple to do anyway i hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe